Hi. So uh, without wasting much time, we'll just start to discuss the use of methotrexate in dermatology. Now what this presentation will, es will essentially cover is to know basics about methotrexate, how to be more familiar with this drug, how to be more comfortable with this drug and how you can use this drug quite easily in your daily practice and manage all inflammatory disorders. And minimum to minimum you should know about some few answers to the routine questions which are asked in Viva so that you can tackle those questions also after this presentation. So uh, we'll start with the basic knowledge about the drug. So <clears throat> the, uh, this it starts with aminoptrin which is a folic acid antagonist and methotrexate is a congener of aminoptrin and the scientific name, the chemical name for that is ermethoptrin. Okay, it's a structural analog of folic acid. It was discovered by Yella Pragada Sabarao in Harvard University and it's essentially a prodrug. So folyl polyglutamate synthase is the enzyme which converts this prodrug into its polyglutamate forms. And these polyglutamate forms are the one which are active. So this polyglutamate forms are the one which is responsible for all sorts of uh, the chemical activity or the Im immunomodulatory activity of methotrexate. So what we have learned from here is that methotrexate is amethoptrin. It's a structural analog of folic acid and it's a prodrug which after conversion by the enzyme polyglutamate synthase converts into its polyglutamate form which are more active. Now if we see properly the structural properties and the structural structure of folic acid and methotrexate, we will find that there are two key differences. Number one, the amine group is, shift, is changed to a methyl group and a hydroxyl group is changed into an amine group. And these two changes are responsible for the new drug, the methotrexate. And that is why the methotrexate attaches itself to the areas of uh, the enzyme DHFR, dihydrophil reductase, and inhibits it, where usually the folic acid should have attached itself. So it's an inhibition of the enzyme. Now, we will understand very briefly the pharmacology of methotrexate, how it acts. It's a potent competitive antagonist. Okay, so it's a potent competitive antagonist of dihydrophilic reductase. Competitive means it competes with the regular substrate which is folic acid and attaches itself to DHFR so that the enzyme does not work. The affinity has is greater than folic acid, so it is more it is that that explains the potency of it. So potent is that the affinity is of uh, is for the enzyme is more than the folic acid and competitive means it competes with folic acid. So various modalities of administrating methotrexate is available. So most commonly that we use is the oral one. Although IV is sometimes used, intramuscular is used when the oral methotrexate is not that tolerated by the patient. A subcutaneous dose is also used although I have never used subcutaneous dose. And topical methotrexate formulations are also available in the concentration of 0 0.5, 0 0.1 or 1%. But I do not use topical methotrexate in my routine practice. I am more comfortable with oral methotrexate and it's better to titrate the doses or change the doses when it's orally. IV and intramuscular should also, uh, should, I would say should be considered only in inpatient settings. Now, the most common route of administration is oral. So oral is an in, it, it is an incomplete absorption. The root because of the oral root, there's incomplete absorption. There's rapid absorption, however, but the plasma level rise is slower. It's the rise is also variable, but the blood levels are more reliable. Now you have to understand that when the rise is slow in the plasma, the levels of methotrexate in plasma will remain at a normal level for a quite a time. Okay. For example, if there is a slow rise and, and the plasma level of methotrexate is slowly rising in the plasma, it will remain in a certain range for a longer time. So that's why the, the levels of methotrexate in plasma is more reliable. Okay. Okay, so most commonly the route of administration that we use or rather I use is oral administration. Now peak levels are seen one hour after ingestion. In food, the, uh, in children, in pediatric population, the absorption of methotrexate is decreased by food and milk. So it's better to time it out if you're using in pediatric population and 
keep it a bit away uh, i usually advise 2 to 3 hours separate from feeding times or meals but in adults there has been no uh, changes in absorption with food and it penetrates blood brain barrier very poorly so if you recall your mbbs knowledge you will find that in case of uh, brain tumors or cns tumors in which the cytotoxic effects of methotrexate is needed used we used to give intrathecal methotrexate which is injectable in, inside or around the spinal cord because the penetration through the blood brain barrier is very poor so to be for methotrexate to be available at a site we have to inject into the sub uh, the uh, sub meningeal spaces okay now again we'll discuss the plasma level it is described to have a triphasic reduction that means the first phase of this triphasic reduction lasts about slightly less than 1 hour and it's because of the distribution of drug in the system and uh, and after that the second phase is around 2 of 2 to 4 hours and that is because of the renal excretion of the drug from the body the third phase is 10 to 27 hours and it corresponds to the half life of the drug okay so we can say that the half life is roughly if, uh, ranges to around 1 day and 50% of the drug is protein bound so we have to take care of that also we, we all know that the free component of any drug is the active component and we have to also look at in cases when we suspect that methotrexate toxicity or the effect is is a uh, there's more toxic effects of methotrexate it's a good idea to look at the lfts and find out how much albumin the patient actually has if the uh, plasma proteins are towards the lower side there will be less protein bound drug and more free drug would be available and that will lead to more side effects the excretion of methotrexate is majorly by the kidneys around 95% 95% or more is excreted by the kidneys so your kft should be in proper range your kidney function test should be proper kidneys should be working adequately for excretion of methotrexate and this becomes important when you are deciding to give a, a higher dose or using methotrexate in patient who might not have properly adequately functioning kidneys or in case of methotrexate toxicity when you need rapid elimination of methotrexate from the body okay now as i've already said in the first slide that the methotrexate is a pro drug it has to be converted to polyglutamate forms and this polyglutamate forms are the active drugs okay so we need this polyglutamate forms and in liver the pro drug uh, amethoptrin or methotrexate gets converted into polyglutamate forms okay now these polyglutamate forms are active and they are more potent dhfr inhibitor and because of their increased activity in cases of increased toxicity you will find that the polyglutamate forms the major acting forms are more similarly they also act as a marker for methotrexate efficacy if you can find good levels of polyglutamate in the serum in the blood that means methotrexate is efficacious it is reaching and it's converting properly to polyglutamate forms which again to repeat are the active forms of the drug now in parenteral administration that means apart from oral the other modes of administration it leads to formation of increased long chain polyglutamate forms it still leads to formation of polyglutamate forms but they are increased long chain and these long chain polyglutamate forms have decreased activity and because of that also decreased toxicity so now we know that parenteral administration first of all it bypasses the uh, or the awkward sensation and side effects of nausea and vomiting and gi disturbances because of parenteral administration and also it leads to formation of long chain polyglutamate forms which have decreased activity and which also have decreased toxicity okay if i can see ha here so we can see this is the tetrahydrofolate okay now folate changes to dihydrofolate by the action of dihydropterate synthetase i know i'm butchering the pronunciation please bear with me so folate changes into dihydrofolate changes into tetrahydrofolate okay now one thing to keep in mind is that both this this whole path, this whole pathway is blocked by methotrexate okay dapsone is a drug which uh, i think dermatologists are the one who are using it left right and center it's one of the most important drug for us dermatologists because it's used in treatment of hansen's leprosy now dapsone inhibits the hydroptrate synthetase and methotrexate trimethoprim uh, sorry trimethoprim combination which is your septran and all inhibits the hydroptrate reductase so we have to keep in mind in patients in which you are using dapsone 
and you want to use methotrexate you have to keep in mind that both of these drugs are inhibiting the same mechanism so this might lead to either decrease efficacy of each of these drugs or increase toxicity of drugs okay additional component to see here in the diagram is that folinic acid or leucoverin bypasses this inhibitory step so we can see that leucoverin here it bypasses all of this step to reach directly to tetrahydrofolate okay that is why when you have methotrexate toxicity the drug of choice is folinic acid you cannot give folic acid in methotrexate toxicity because it's a potent competitive inhibitor of folic acid so if you it try to increase the concentration the, the potency of methotrexate does not allow it to be dislodged that easily from dhfr so it's better to prescribe or give folinic acid so that the steps of inhibition is bypassed by folinic acid to reach directly to tetrahydrofolate synthesis sorry tetrahydrofolate and further continue the formation of 1c compounds and formation of dna so that the toxicity of methotrexate is limited okay so clear so two things to know be very very careful in combining dapson with methotrexate or sulfonamide trimethoprim combination with methotrexate and folinic acid is a drug of choice for methotrexate toxicity because it bypasses the inhibitory steps or the steps inhibited by methotrexate so we get the substrate directly okay now coming to mechanism of action initially i used to think that there are only one or two mechanism of action but it has been found in multiple recent studies that it acts on nearly all aspects of immunity and also cell proliferation kinetics so all the other cells including macrophages t cells b cells it has action on nearly all cells so if you want to read that in detail there are good articles you let me know send me an email or a comment so that i can share those articles with you on what is the mechanism what are in total the mechanism of action of methotrexate now as i said that initially the major mechanism of action was thought to be dna synthesis inhibition so dna synthesis decreases because the inhibition is acted on s phase s phase is the synthesis phase where all the all the macro all the micromolecules required for cell proliferation are synthesized so that the cell can divide so previous slides show showed us that using methotrexate there is less formation tetrahydrofolate which leads to less formation of dna and because of that the cell doesn't is not able to divide or proliferate so the s during the s phase when the cell is trying to form a lot of micromolecules for its division that formation is inhibited by methotrexate and because of that the dna synthesis is decreased and the cell does not proliferate now initially this was the major mechanism but now we know very well that its action on t cells is 1000 times more potent in as compared to the proliferation of keratinocyte so we have to understand that the inhibition of of t cells by methotrexate is 1000 times more potent than its action on keratinocyte proliferation initially we used to think that keratinocyte proliferation is inhibited by methotrexate because of its action on decreased dna synthesis but now the action over t cells is much more potent and we have found with multiple studies that this is one of the major actions or major mechanism of action for methotrexate okay so it on acting t on t cells it decreases ctla positive t cells so catla positive t cells decrease that means the t cells which are primed to home to the skin micro environment are also decreased okay so t cells which have been recruited towards the epidermis decrease after methotrexate along with that endo sorry along with that endothelial e selectin so these selectins are responsible for attaching the cells to the uh, uh, skin milieu and that decreases which leads to no attachment or decrease attachment of t cells in from for the keratinocytes or the dermis or the epidermis and the, which leads to further less activity of this immune cells less immune damage and clinical efficacy i hope i'm making myself clear that the action on t cells is much more potent than keratinocytes and it also decreases the homing or the recruitment of t cells towards the skin milieu now the enzymes sorry the enzyme which is somewhat inhibited not somewhat which is which is majorly inhibited is icar so icar i always forget the full form but this is one of very important viva questions so you need to remember i think it's amino imido carboxy amylo rna transformylase 
so if you could just give me one second i'll just find out the full name so that i can give you correct information yeah so it's amino imido carboxy amido rna transformylase so this inhibition icar inhibition leads to increase in the increase in the adenosine and decrease in the nfk beta the nuclear factor beta so nfk beta as we know is one of the top most uh, cytokine so which leads to more inflammatory cascade bottom down as it goes down and nfk beta is, it attaches itself to you know dna response elements leading to more synthesis of inflammatory cytokines so when nfk beta is decreased the subsequent downstream cytokines are also decreased so that and and the increased adenosine also leads to a proper uh, uh, decrease in inflammatory cytokines along with increase in anti inflammatory or non inflammatory cytokines and uh, at this point i will mention there are two anti inflammatory cytokines which are very important il6 and il10 so these two are very important and when their levels increase they acts as an inhibition to increase inflammatory cytokines okay along with that another enzyme which is inhibited by methotrexate is 5 prime nucleotidase and this inhibition also leads to increase in adenosine so we can see that two major enzymes which are inhibited apart from dhfr leads to increase in adenosine and decrease in nuclear factor beta okay so we are clear i hope this slide is clear that action on t cells is much more potent it decreases the homing and recruitment of t cells in the skin milieu and at the endothelial e selectin leads to less attachment of uh, immune cells in the dermis and epidermis so that there's less inflammatory damage at the site along with that icar transformylase inhibition leads to increase in adenosine and decrease in nuclear factor kappa beta and also action on 5 prime nucleotidase leads to increase in adenosine okay now there are multiple as i said that multiple mechanism of action has been elucidated by different articles different guidelines or, or different uh, research papers and it has been also found to inhibit jack1 stat3 pathway and jack2 and stat5 pathway so if you have a basic understanding just a little understanding of how the jack and stat pathway works they are these are basically receptors and after attaching itself to their substrate they leads to a downstream cascade of uh, a, a downstream steps of synthesis of inflammatory cytokines so we already know of jack inhibitors it's quite commonly used now so jack inhibitors act by the same way they inhibit jack stat pathway which leads to less inflammatory cytokines a similar mechanism has been found for methotrexate which inhibits jack1 stat3 or jack2 stat5 pathway okay along with that it also increases the sensitivity of t cells to apoptosis so it increases the sensitivity of t cells to die basically methotrexate so and it's uh, if i can remember correctly it is it has something to do with uh, nitro nitro oxide or something but i'll read about it if anybody would like to know about it i can share how the mechanism of increasing the sensitivity of t cells by methotrexate so that they die i can just illustrate that now i have already mentioned that interleukin 4 interleukin 10 are the anti inflammatory cytokines i think i have mentioned wrongly before interleukin 4 and the interleukin 10 are the anti inflammatory cytokines and these are very important cytokines okay multiple times in immune mediated disorders you will find that anti inflammatory cytokines play a major role and that role are is majorly played by interleukin 10 it is also implicated in uh, narrow band immunosuppression in vitiligo so interleukin 10 and interleukin 4 are the anti inflammatory cytokine this is increased so inc is short for increased and also it inhibits collagenase synthesis so less collagenase means less destruction of collagen and it, it, that is one of the mechanism implicated when we use methotrexate in scleroderma or morphia uh, disorders apart from that this is just the tip of the iceberg there is a very detailed mechanisms of action of methotrexate on nearly all cell populations of the immunity okay so we can discuss in details if anybody wants to discuss what are the some some total mechanism of action of methotrexate
Now clinical use. So FDA has approved it for psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, Cesare syndrome and these are the uh, indications seen in dermatology. However, there are non-dermatological FDA approved indications also which includes if I remember correctly uh, hyaluronidiform mole and also in lymphomas. So these two are non-dermatological indications FDA approved. In dermatology we use it uh, after approval in psoriasis and Cesare syndrome. Off-label dermatological uses. Now it's better whenever you have to answer, let's say you are giving your viva and the drug that is handed over to you or the drug that you pick is methotrexate or for that matter any kind of drug, it's better to divide everything into these strong headings. Okay. Proliferative dermatosis, immunobullous dermatosis, autoimmune connective tissue disease, dermatitis, vasculitis. When you divide this uh, you know this huge list because otherwise you will think how much how many of them should I remember you don't have to remember anything you just have to remember five major headlines proliferative immunobullous autoimmune vasculitis dermatitis that is all as a as a dermatologist we already know examples of these disorders so you just need to remember five and then doing why I can give those examples so off-label dermatological uses for example in PRP pityriasis rubra pilaris or pleva and immunobullous like pemphigus, bullous pemphigoid, cicatricial pemphigoid, epidermal acid bullosa acquisita. Autoimmune, it is usually used in dermatomyositis, SLE, scleroderma, morphia, okay. Vasculitis, LCV, leukocytoblastic vasculitis, Bushets, pyoderma gangrenosum, dermatitis, atopic dermatitis. And other disorders is sarcoidosis, it's very uh, commonly used. Progressive keloids, it has been used. Mycosis fungoides. Now, mycosis fungoides is cousin brother, younger cousin brother of Cesare syndrome. So, we can connect these two together. Okay, along with that, cutaneous Crohn's, prurigo, also in alopecia areata. So, progressive alopecia areata, there have been a lot of use of methotrexate in decreasing the progression of alopecia areata. One thing which I would add is that in alopecia areata, it is the action of methotrexate is induction of stability of disease or induction of hair growth but it will not maintain the great uh, hair growth that is uh, my experience and i think articles do mention that so it's better to induce in 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 nearly all of these disorders it's better to induce you know uh, stabilization with the potent steroids either topically or systemic and then maintain if maintenance is required on methotrexate which is one of the steroid sparing agents so this is the uh, the, the uh, protocol that I follow is to stabilize the disease first, make the patient comfortable and then keep it stabilized on methotrexate. Okay. So, so now if you want to just remember all of this indication, you have to just remember FD approved, sorry, we have to just remember FD approved indications and just five major headings. Just remember these five. Other you can include anything under the sun. So just five headings and two two examples of each and you now know 10 plus 2 12 examples of using methotrexate minimum so this is how you are supposed to supposed to remember a list okay just divide into small parts and remember the headings okay now let's come to psoriasis psoriasis is the most common indication for which we as a dermatologist use methotrexate we uh, i personally prefer to use methotrexate uh, in my patients because it leads to a good resolution of disease the side effects are much more tolerable as compared to any other drug and uh, it's better uh, it's it's better to uh, you know regulate how much methotrexate the patient takes because it's a weekly dose so the compliance is also better in the patient if you have to take a drug once a week it's better uh, apart from that the other drugs like a premilas or you have jack inhibitors has to be taken daily so this is much better in my opinion, but that is my personal opinion. Now, this is one of the most important Viva questions, which is very routinely asked. What are the indications of methotrexate therapy in psoriasis? Okay, so your, your faculty members would ask you to list all the indications when and where you would use methotrexate in psoriasis. Now, this is erythrodermic psoriasis. I think it's the drug of choice for erythrodermic psoriasis. And in erythrodermic psoriasis, personally, I've treated around 5-6 patients of erythrodermic psoriasis with only methotrexate. And it leads to a good resolution of the disease activity, very uh, rapid uh, decrease in erythema 
and a good maintenance also if there is multiple episodes of atrium psoriasis happening in a year now psoriatic arthritis not responding to conventional therapy so uh, it's it's a good idea to remember if you're using methotrexate for cutaneous indications in any cutaneous indication if there is associated joint involvement the drug of choice in is more or less methotrexate okay so in psoriasis if you have psoriatic arthritis consider methotrexate if rheumatoid arthritis has skin manifestation consider methotrexate in reactive arthritis consider methotrexate if in scleroderma sorry if in systemic sclerosis there is joint involvement consider methotrexate if there is uh, in morphia and if i remember correctly the british guidelines says that if there is progressive morphia especially if it is crossing the joints which might hamper the movement of the limb in the future consider methotrexate okay so erythrodermic psoriasis joint involvement pustular psoriasis which is generalized or debilitating localized disease so if it is generalized or if it is localized but very uh, causing a much discomfort to the patient psoriasis that adversely affects the ability to maintain employment that means psoriasis let's say on hands patient is not able to move the hands or it is such generalized that the itching itself is not allowing the patient to work and one thing which i personally add is the psychiatric component also okay so psychiatric component means if the patient is emotionally very much disturbed because of psoriasis so this is also one thing which we should ask our patients then what is the psychological impact of your skin disease specifically psoriasis in the present context so if a patient is very much disturbed and the body surface area because one uh, i think it meant it, it is mentioned here extensive yeah so body surface area more than 10% is a good indication to start methotrexate but i in few cases have started methotrexate when the body surface area is less than 10 especially when the patient is psychologically very disturbed and might require a proper resolution of his disease activity okay now lack of response to phototherapy of course phototherapy is one of the safest use especially naroband in psoriasis but naroband has its own set of disadvantages puva has its own set of disadvantages and most of this disadvantages is logistical so when you cannot give phototherapy to your patients or if there are lack of uh, lack of efficacy with retinoids methotrexate can be easily considered so it's one of it's my favorite drug to handle psoriasis wherever i can start i start with methotrexate and then manage by topical agents when the disease is less in extent now the dose is 0.2 to 0.3 mg per kg this is also one of the important viva questions people uh, which is asked to the students what are what is the mg per kg uh, dose i think it's it's not it's not per day it's per week let me just check from my notes yeah 0.2 to 0.3 mg per week so ju- i'll just make this correction point week it is one of the most cost effective method so i remember uh, during my residency there was a patient who used to uh, pull rickshaws for employment and had severe psoriasis and i uh, we had to manage him only on methotrexate and one of my faculty said that consider him for methotrexate because methotrexate is dirt cheap so that's what i always that that line is what i remember that it's dirt cheap so when patient is non affording in fact right now i'm treating a patient who sells fruits uh, roadside uh, in roadside stalls and he cannot afford topical medication to that extent so i'm managing only on emollients sun exposure and methotrexate okay so it's one of the most cost effective medications to be used so this is also one of the viva question that i think i was asked that what is the drug which you can give which is not that problematic financially to the patient so methotrexate was the answer so roughly 1 to 4 weeks is needed to show clinical efficacy i have already told you that good outcome good clinical outcome is seen in 4 to 8 weeks minimum therapy people mentioned 2 to 3 months where the patient is somewhat comfortable you have to realize that the uh, the drug will be efficacious according to you might not be efficacious according to the patient patient would feel that after 1 to 1 and a half months the disease should go away but it takes some time for near complete clearance or let's say passi 75 clearance passi 75 is more than 75% reduction from baseline passi score now uh, it might take months but 
as a umbrella answer to patient's question that how much time will this take for me to be better i usually say you should start seeing good benefit from one month onwards and roughly 3 to 4 months would be required for proper benefit to be seen you know and it's always better to take your patient under confidence explain to them what the disease is and explain to them how the drug is going to act in that disease and how it will make them better rather than telling them all sorts of wrong answer that yes you will be better in this much time it's better to keep them in confidence and explain to them what is happening many patients would really like to know what is psoriasis and what is happening to them and how the drug is going to help if you can explain that properly to your patient the compliance improves drastically okay so as we have said that if the psoriasis has psoriatic arthritis component go for methotrexate so i i have treated i am currently treating a patient of psoriasis whose body surface area is around 2 to 3% but he has joint involvement so i am treating with methotrexate now high doses are cytotoxic when we are talking about high doses it's roughly around let's say 100 mg a week or something now this cytotoxicity is used in malignancies okay so in carcinomas when we are treating carcinomas high dose methotrexate is required however the advantage to us is that in dermatological indications the low doses of methotrexate which is roughly around 15 to 25 mg per week have been found to be immunomodulatory they don't destroy the cells but modulate the immunity and that is why in dermatological indications in skin related indications we have lower doses of methotrexate so the associated Uh, side effects is also less seen in skin patient as compared to patients of malignancy who are under treatment with methotrexate okay so whenever you would like to you know go back and uh, hear again or listen to a part of it again you just have to just scroll down or use the time stamp to go uh, you can pause it make notes if you want to but it's it's a good idea to just hear what i'm saying now other indications include as i these are some of the indications which i have included from the bigger list that we saw initially in which you had to remember only five headings so one of this is pityriasis rubella pilaris sorry pityriasis rubella pilaris bullous pemphigus more than pemphigus vulgaris so it has shown to be much more efficacious in bullous pemphigus uh, sorry bullous pemphigus as compared to pemphigus vulgaris others are dermatomyositis systemic lupus erythematosus even cutaneous le but now one thing you have to keep in mind is let just pardon my bad handwriting kidneys so we all know that kidneys are one of the major organs which can be involved in systemic lupus erythematosus in fact the involvement of only kidneys causing lupus nephritis is the only criteria required to diagnose sle okay so when treating a patient of le with methotrexate for any other indication you need to have a look at kfts because as i have said that more than 95% of methotrexate is removed by kidneys so kidneys have to be functioned properly also this precipitation of methotrexate renal tubules we will discuss it further and because of that the kidney damage might might be severe in case of lupus so you just have to keep an eye on kfts now scleroderma and systemic sclerosis sclerosis as i have said in progressive disease progressive skin involvement or if there is associated joint involvement or the skin involvement is crossing a joint which might hamper the mobility of the limb in the future consider methotrexate okay vasculitis like lcv like uh, also pyoderma gangrenosum neutrophilic dermatosis like pg bachets sweet syndromes okay this reminds me of a story again so i was treating a patient of neutrophilic dermatosis i think it was sweets after biopsy and i started on dapson okay because um, she was a female of reproductive age group and i was avoiding methotrexate okay just married so i was using dapson and the disease was initially showed 20 to 30% improvement but further improvement was not seen even after increasing dapson to twice a, twice the daily doses so i added methotrexate and uh, there was decrease in uh, there was increased clinical efficacy but then i came to know that methotrexate and dapson should be very carefully used 
and so I stopped Daxon and now she's been maintained on methotrexate along with proper counseling regarding reproductive uh, aspects of using methotrexate. Okay. Atopic dermatitis, I have, uh, as far as I can remember, many of the articles mentioned that in pediatric age group and atopic dermatitis, it has shown to be uh, having, having a good clinical efficacy. So many, many people have used uh, methotrexate in atopic dermatitis in pediatric age group. I have ha I have managed few patients uh, of the adult population with extensive atopic dermatitis using methotrexate where uh, long term steroids were contraindicated. Okay, so it's a good drug to have as an option as a backup to your steroid uses. Okay. Now in this other unapproved, you have to remember that these are unapproved indications. These are just few salient points which you can just keep in mind. In atopic dermatitis, the doses required are lower as compared to psoriasis, but the response is also slower. So some of the articles mentioned that the, uh, the immune modulatory activity of methotrexate in atopic dermatitis is the requirement is low so lower doses in the range of 10 to 15 milligram per week can also work okay so we need to titrate that according to the clinical uh, requirement of the patient now as i mentioned before also that alopecia areata methotrexate leads to induction of hair regrowth and adults are more responsive okay so we can keep that in mind uh, that in pediatric age group we can use methotrexate but it's better to use that in progressive disease when other better drugs are contraindicated or you are not able to use them and adults are shown to be more responsive in uh, methotrexate when it is used for alopecia areata okay now lupus erythematosus skin and joints when these both are involved methotrexate is a very good option it leads to a very good control but as I've mentioned that this is much more important aspect, you have to be very careful in renal disease. Okay. Scleroderma and morphia, progressive skin disease, joint involvement or if it crosses joints. In dermatomyositis, it has been shown that methotrexate leads to pro good improvement in skin symptoms, the skin involvement and less than that muscle damage or myositis and a very, very less in involvement in pulmonary. Now, uh, methotrexate can also lead to pulmonary fibrosis in long term there have been few articles about it so whenever there's lung involvement uh, initially methotrexate was contraindicated but in recent studies it has been found that there is not much pulmonary fibrosis because of methotrexate and in disorders like scleroderma the disease itself uh, in systemic sclerosis the disease itself can lead to significant pulmonary fibrosis. So it's better to use methotrexate in the initial stages when the disease is progressive and the internal organ damage is not much and the, the at the end the eff effect of methotrexate is much better than its supposed side effect of pulmonary fibrosis. Okay. In pityriasis rubra pilaris higher doses of methotrexate is needed and mul multiple times it has to be combined with retinoids. Now my personal uh, drug, of, drug that I use in PRP is retinoids. It, the efficacy is significantly better but if you wish to utilize it with retinoids methotrexate is a good combination to have okay but remember that higher doses in the range of 20 to 25 milligram per week might be required and it's a good advice from my side that never be restricted to the doses which you have learned so i have learned 15 milligram per week when i was training as a jr and it it always used to scare me to increase the dose or to decrease the dose so when we increased the dose, I was scared about side effect profile. I was scared about toxicity to the patient. And when the dose was decreased, I was scared about relapse of disease. But with time and experience, you will find that this fear decreases to some extent. It is still present, but it decreases to some extent. And you will be, you will be able to control the amount of doses of methotrexate that you are prescribing to your patients. Okay. In PLEVA or PLC, low doses of methotrexate are required. So you can just titrate the weekly doses of methotrexate as per your indication or as per the clinical requirement of the patient and the efficacy the drug shows in subsequent clinical visits. Okay. Now let's talk about folic acid. One of the very important viva question. Let me just write it here. Very important viva question. When to give folic acid? How much to give folic acid? Okay. Now, why do we need to give folic acid? Number one, the enzyme is inhibited by methotrexate. Okay. 
the folic acid is present there but the newer enzymes which are not attached itself to methotrexate would require some substrate so that the 1c compounds or 1 carbon compounds are created for dna synthesis okay so we need to supply those extra folic acid to be used by those uninhibited enzymes so, and we prescribe folic acid with methotrexate now all patients who are on methotrexate in my opinion irrespective of the dose should be given folic acid now the next question is how much to give so books mention 1 to 5 milligram per day some books mention 5 milligram per week i personally use 5 milligram per week on the next day of uh, methotrexate uh, administration and you have to also keep in mind while taking history and examination for the patient that if the patient is at risk of hematotoxicity or blood toxicity or increased homocysteine if the patient is let's say a cardiac patient and increased homocysteine might might be harmful to the patient you need to give a bit more folic acid however the articles and i think the research the journals say that not much difference is there if you give folic acid on each day except methotrexate or if you give it only once a week so I personally start once a week so that the amount of money spent on medication is less for the patient with the same clinical efficacy. But you can keep in mind that if there are some risk factors present for these toxicities, it's better to give more folic acid. Okay. Now we have to remember that it decreases the, the blood toxicity and the myelosuppression so, uh, for, for methotrexate. The myelosuppression has to be mild. So mild myelosuppression is decreased by folic acid. Okay. Increased homocysteine is also decreased by folic acid supplementation. But, and this is important, liver fibrosis, pneumonitis and moderate to severe myelosuppression, there has been little to no effect of folic acid supplementation. That doesn't mean that you will not give folic acid, you, you have to give folic acid. But remember that you are not treating or managing liver fibrosis, pneumonitis or moderate to severe myelosuppression by giving folic acid only. Okay. Now we have had a very short discussion on daily and weekly doses. I give weekly. The efficacy is found to be similar for weekly dose and daily doses. It has, it uh, decreases the pill count of the patient, the number of medicines they have to take and the compliance is also better because they remember that on the day of methotrexate, they have to take methotrexate and next day they have to take folic acid. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so contraindications. Now some absolute contraindications and all of these tables that I'm showing have been taken from Wolverton. I think let me just correct myself. Yeah, Wolverton fourth edition, which is the latest edition and Wolverton is the uh, book to refer if you want to know about drugs. After Wolverton, I think you should refer only individual articles regarding the drug activity in, in individual dermatosis. But it's better to start from Wolverton. That should be the somewhat of basal minimum, a baseline for drugs. Okay. Now, a uh, contraindication should be known hypersensitivity to methotrexate or the components of the formulation. Alcohol alcoholism. Now we know that liver has to be properly working for methotrexate. Remember that in the initial few slides, methotrexate has to be converted to its polyglutamate forms, which happens in liver hepatocytes. So liver has to be functioning properly. Okay. So any kind of chronic liver disease, including alcoholic liver disease, prolonged methotrexate intake leads to liver damage, liver fibrosis, liver cirrhosis. Okay. So if the liver is already damaged by some other mechanism like alcohol or obesity, or if it's more susceptible to damage, let's say patient is a chronic alcohol drinker. Okay and you do not advise him to cut down or stop alcohol he might be continued he might continue to drink alcohol and because of that the damage to liver is substantially increased so your counseling should always include stop alcohol okay never never say limit alcohol to a person who drinks alcohol they will think that they are already drinking in their limits okay so what you have to say is stop alcohol stop smoking Tell them the liver might be damaged because of the drug and drugs are important for him. Alcohol, not so much. Okay. Now pre-existing blood dyscrasias like decreased hemoglobin, WBC and platelets. We know that methotrexate leads to myelosuppression. 
so we don't want to use methotrexate in patients who already have decreased cell counts okay breastfeeding and pregnancy methotrexate is category x drug as per the older classification so a patient who is planning pregnancy a female who wants to conceive either you stop uh, you counsel them not to conceive while on the medication or you do not use methotrexate and if you are using methotrexate in females of reproductive age groups you need to ask about menstrual history lmp better to have two upts one month apart if possible urine pregnancy test so that you are sure that patient is not pregnant at the current time when methotrexate has to be used and also what i do is i write a short paragraph in their opd cards regarding the teratogenic effects of methotrexate and why it is not supposed to be used in pregnancy and that all of this has been told to the patient and necessary history has been taken to rule out pregnancy at the current time of visit so that is important much more important uh, for the patient and also for you from medical legal standpoint and you have to remember that in in breastfeeding pregnancy it is absolutely a strict no in immunodeficiency syndrome it's better not to use methotrexate because the immunity is not working up to its mark we need not suppress it further now one question comes from this part is what what should be the drug of choice or the drug to be used when a retro positive or a hiv positive patient has psoriasis now psoriasis doesn't uh, work in the normal fashion in a patient who is immuno immunocompromised and it's much more severe the cases that i have seen is much more severe when the patient also has hiv and one drug to consider at that point is retinoids okay no methotrexate so retinoid is a good drug which you can consider in a patient who has hiv and has psoriasis now now box warning should always be prescribed by clinicians experienced with the drug which i hope you would be after this presentation in hepatotoxicity like liver cirrhosis fibrosis or injury these are warnings pregnancy opportunistic infections second malignancies like lymphomas furthermore in subsequent slides we'll discuss that some lymphomas like b cell induced lymphomas or ebv induced lymphomas are more on methotrexate therapy so many of this lymphomas they go back or they regress when methotrexate is stopped now because of immunomodulation and immunosuppression provided by methotrexate the normal mechanisms that prevent these kind of lymphomas or malignancies to occur are stopped they are decreased so these kind of lymphomas may happen in a patient who is taking methotrexate for longer duration now this might seem a bit contraindicatory that for lymphomas and leukemias the drugs which is used commonly is methotrexate which itself can cause lymphomas but the warning is for the clinician to be on the lookout of these for these lymphomas okay now bone marrow suppressions like aplastic anemia and pancytopenia we know that myelosuppression by methotrexate might be problematic in patients okay uh, pneumonitis especially in ra patients gi like diarrhea nausea is the most common side effect with methotrexate okay so nausea diarrhea vomiting so you need to be sure about it ulcerative stomach stomatitis rest i think you're not able to see but not that important concomitant radiotherapy so the word which is hidden is radiotherapy now there's one thing which is known as radiation recall now what radiation recall is that if let's say you have a patient of localized malignancy who is being treated by radiotherapy and you give a brachytherapy or a localized radiotherapy to a certain site of the body uh, after managing the disease by radiotherapy if you want to start methotrexate it has been found that the skin over that site might lead to kind of a dermatitic reaction and that is known as the radiation recall okay as far as i can remember this is known as radiation recall and that is also one of the things which are seen in patients of malignancy radiation recall phenomena okay so this is seen in patients who have received radiotherapy for their malignancies others are again whenever you have a huge list just remember the bigger headlines nothing else just remember the bigger headlines infections now reactivation of hepatitis b is important because of course we need a proper functioning liver for methotrexate so all sorts of hepatitis they have to be uh, 
methotrexate can lead to reactivation because of uh, immunosuppression activity of methotrexate. Tuberculosis becomes very important in Indian context. We have a country who is uh, suffering with tuberculosis and you need to screen in my suggestion would be every patient in which you are planning, you, you planning to start methotrexate. Screen with a chest x-ray and a monto test bare minimum. Okay. And if you have any kind of indication, any kind of thoughts that a patient might have a uh, have tuberculosis, it's better to get a pulmonary opinion and clearance for methotrexate. Okay, rather than, rather than relying on radiologist report. Okay, and monto positivity. In our country, monto positivity is not that strong factor for TB infection. If it is less than you can say five uh, mm, ten mm. If it's more than 15, of course, consider it as an activity of tuberculosis. But in our country, the uh, cutoffs, the usual cutoffs don't work that much. It's better to have a pulmonary specialist on board with you so that you can very well rule out tuberculosis so that there is no reactivation. Treat the treat one disorder. Don't give any other disorder to the patient. Okay. Now, uh, other uh, live vaccine, we'll discuss further when to give vaccines during methotrexate therapy. Now in cutaneous, we have already discussed about variation we call methotrexate, nodulosis, miscellaneous, I think all other things, okay, hematological. Now for weekly dosing, the effects are not that much. First effect is seen in decreased platelet counts because platelets have a very lower half-life as compared to other cell populations. So the first effect is seen in platelet counts. So decreasing platelet counts and when I say decreasing means decreasing nearer to or below the lower limit of platelet counts should indicate the clinician that some kind of excess myelosuppression might be happening okay increased platelet count is also a marker of inflammatory activity so if a patient has increased platelet count it can be because of inflammation and when the inflammation is controlled by methotrexate it might decrease so it, it depends on the clinician to clinician on what exactly cutoff to be taken for uh, decreasing cell counts especially platelets Okay, uh, hematological reactions we have, I have already told you that if you give folic acid along with methotrexate, the reactions are markedly decreased. Okay, nausea, most common side effects, vomiting, diarrhea, the decrease also, is, it, is, it is decreased by folic acid supplementation, liver, liver fibrosis, cirrhosis, very very important aspect of methotrexate activity. Okay, so pregnancy rating is category X which is the older category A, B, C, D and X are the older one. They are not used right now. But in VIVA, it's better to either give the newer rating or give both of them. Let the sir or ma'am, the older rating is category X, but the newer rating is contraindicated. Okay, this is the rating. Nowadays, we don't use X, X, A, B, C. We just say the term that this drug is contraindicated in pregnancy. What are the headings? So, hepatotoxicity, pulmonary, hemato, other other just remember these headings like reproductive renal and all that okay drug interactions so this is again a table from Wolverton. more common risk factors for methotrexate pancytopenia is because of drug interactions especially trimethylpine sulfamethoxyl which is cotrimazole NSAIDs I would like to include dapson also okay renal disease even a slight increase in creatinine is an important risk factor. So creatinine in the range of 1.5 to 2 is an important risk factor. In elderly patient, kidneys might be damaged because of reduced renal function. You have to be very careful in this age group. If you don't give folate, of course pancytopenia is one of the major side effects. You have to give folate. It has virtually found to never occur with folate supplementation. Okay, so give folic acid. Less common risk factors are if you give daily. Now there are instances where daily methotrexate is given or may be considered. Mostly those are malignancies. In skin, weekly doses suffice. So if you want to give daily, you have to keep in mind that toxicity can occur. First four to six weeks can lead to uh, side effects, majorly nausea and GI disturbances. If albumin is less, so again repeating that 50% of the drug is protein bound. So if albumin is less, they will this reduce methotrexate binding capacity leading to increase in free methotrexate leading to more effects and subsequent more side effects. Major illnesses, infections, 
bleeding disorders because of pans, uh, thrombocytopenias, all of this have to be keep in mind. Okay. Now monitoring. Everything starts with examination. Do not jump to investigations on the first step. Okay. Examine first. Careful history and physical examination, identification of patients who have increased risk like patients who are obese, who are alcohol, chronic alcohol drinker, recording concomitant medications that may interact with mitrotixate. Lab investigation includes CBC, platelet count, LFTs, serological test, KFTs, along with uh, viral, viral uh, screening for Hep B, Hep C and HIV. Now liver biopsy. Liver biopsy is not indicated especially in low sorry especially in low disc let me just take this out. Hmm. Especially in low risk patient is not at all indicated right now in high dose only first biopsy when the total cumulative dose reaches 4 gram. You can do subsequent biopsies after every 1.5 gram increase. These are just you know uh, a good benchmark to remember. Okay, and in high risk patients like patients who already have NASH or obesity or hyperlipidemia or chronic alcoholism, consider liver biopsy. Consider. Okay. Okay, so uh, continuing, <coughs> continuing with the follow up, the laboratory follow up is to, is to be used with CBC, platelet count, liver function test. Five to six days after test dose, a good idea would be to say, do the investigations one day prior to your next dose. So for example, if you are prescribing methotrexate every Monday, get another blood test done on the succeeding Sunday. Okay. So that is one day before the last dose. It's easier for the patient to remember. What I use is uh, from zero week, then after two weeks, then again after at the at fourth week, then at eighth, and then I do it every three monthly depending on what my initial investigations show. Now renal function test has to be done once or twice a year is sufficient. If they are not deranged, once a year is okay. Now it is mentioned and I think it's mentioned here also that methotrexate is not nephrotoxic at standard skin doses. But if the kidney is involved because of anything else, it might lead to methotrexate toxicity. Now addition is fibro scan. Now fibro scan a roughly ear screening is okay. You need a collaboration with a gastroenterologist who knows how to read fibro scan and it's a very good modality if it's available for your assessing liver status. Okay. So uh, as of now fibro scan is you would say a recommended or preferred liver biopsy is not preferred. Okay. And just go to this previous slide. So if these parameters are this, better to get a fibro scan, a baseline fibro scan. Okay. Now VCTE, VCTE is vibration control elastography or fibro scan. Uh, this will tell you about liver stiffness. Now what happens is that with a fibro scan probe, you send some sound waves through the abdomen, sorry, not through the abdomen, across the abdomen and these get reflected back and the amount or the, uh, this reflecting back of the sound waves gives you data and will tell you how stiff the eco texture of liver is okay and it is uh, reported in kilopascals so less than 7.9 this is just uh, this is theoretical uh, mentioned in books and you can uh, read reports yourself when you are analyzing patients on methotrexate so less than 7.9 is normal and more than 9.6 is indicative of fibrosis in between is intermediate okay so this can easily act as a good parameter to judge whether the liver is significantly involved or not. Also an yearly fibro scan screening is okay. It is recommended. Also if the patient is at risk which we had initially also also discussed if we
now methotrexate toxicity i think we just we are just ending it in two slides toxicity for filgastrin is a granulocyte coronary stimulating factor for myelosuppression so if you have myelosuppression because of methotrexate you give filgastrin and this will lead to increased cell counts okay if methotrexate intake is more than 1 mg per kg within the last hours you give activated charcoal now activated charcoal what it does is it, it absorbs if it's oral absorption sorry oral intake of methotrexate the activated charcoal will absorb the excess methotrexate it will prevent it from getting absorbed into the bloodstream if your patient has uh, take, taken a lot of methotrexate and the and the three most common reason for methotrexate toxicity is ppp physician patient pharmacist physician that means you you might not be able to completely explain to your patients how to take methotrexate there might be some confusion patient they have not understood properly and they are taking daily dose or higher doses or pharmacist if they have told the patient something other than what you have prescribed or because of some mistake patient uh, the pharmacist has given a larger dose to the patient or they have given methotrexate when some other medication was prescribed so basically human error is the most common cause of methotrexate toxicity now if you have a patient with methotrexate toxicity mostly it involves uh, so mostly it presents with pancytopenia uh, severe critical condition patient is not doing well there severe mucositis the psoriatic lesions have become eroded bleeding from the erosions because platelet counts are very low if liver is damaged then clotting factors are low there's significant bleeding from this or erosion severe mucositis genital mucosa is involved so patient usually presents in a very dire state keep the patient well hydrated iv fluids oral fluids keep him well hydrated so that more urine is formed and urine excretion of methotrexate takes place urine alkalization is also mentioned in books you give sodium bicarbonate to alkali uh, to um, make the urine more alkaline so that the methotrexate is not precipitated in the renal tubules we have mentioned in previous slides that methotrexate can precipitate in renal tubules and cause damage in alkaline urine that is prevented so we can also turn the increase the ph of urine to prevent precipitation of methotrexate now it did treatment of choice is leucovorin calcium or folinic acid in the initial stages of this presentation i have said that folinic acid bypasses all the steps which have been inhibited by methotrexate that is why we have to give folinic acid not folic acid folinic acid okay now two things the two regimens that i have mentioned one is neutralizing other is rescue in neutralizing you give leucovorin calcium equal to or more than the dose of methotrexate taken within the hour okay so how how much methotrexate they have taken within the last hour you give that much of folinic acid to the patient iv or iron if you are giving methotrexate uh, sorry uh, folinic acid injection it should be equal to the last methotrexate dose or 25 mg whichever is greater followed by 15 mg every 6 hourly till 48 hours this leads to roughly 10 doses these are the amount of dose you have to give to the patient okay so 25 mg or the last dose whichever is higher then 15 mg every 6 hourly till 48 hours okay now this is this is because patient has taken methotrexate inadvertently and there is toxicity okay rescue is done when you are using methotrexate in higher doses let's say for malignancies and you want to prevent other normal cells from dying because of methotrexate okay so for that you give 15 mg folinic acid after 12 to 24 hours of methotrexate infusion followed by similarly 15 mg every 6 hours till 48 hours okay you have to just make sure that this window is there so that we can uh, so that the malignant cells take up most of the impact of methotrexate infusion clear so folinic acid rescue or folinic acid treatment for methotrexate toxicity is that after taking care of everything else which is hydration urine uh, form, proper urine formation uh, fill gastrin for uh, decreased cell counts you give folinic acid 15 25 mg or greater plus 15 mg every 6 hourly for 48 hours i hope this remains more or less clear okay so this was some of the aspects regarding methotrexate treatment and uh, with that i would just end my presentation uh, if there are any other questions that you i have been asking viva and you would like me to uh, 
talk about it or find answers just you can comment uh, below or just let me know send me a message or you can just email me on my email id if there are some of the queries which you would like to answer or any suggestions you would like to give how i can uh, make this more make presentation more conducive and more comprehensive a good idea to learn from this kind of videos and presentation is to let it you know uh, let it run in the background so that you hear and passive infusion of knowledge takes place and slowly slowly day by day i think we'll be able to handle newer drugs uh, periodically and we'll be able to learn most commonly used drugs that we come across so that we are better prepared in using those drugs in their respective indications and uh, treat patients better okay and if it helps in viva that's uh, cherry on the cake so with that uh, i'll just i'll end this presentation thank you for listening if there are any issues i'm open to conversations thank you